This is part three of a review of rational functions covering AP Precalculus topics 1.7 through 1.11. If you missed part two, you can either click the link that appears in the upper right hand corner or find the link in the description. In this video, we will practice solving rational inequalities. If you appreciate this content, please show it by hitting that like button. Solve the following inequalities. Write your answers using interval notation. First, we find the zeros of the left side of the inequality, which we will call f of x. Label it like this, f of x equals zero. And this is simple because uh, a rational function will equal zero where the numerator is equal to zero. So that's just going to be x equals three. We also need the values that will cause f of x to be undefined. Label it like this, and this will be where the denominator is equal to zero. So that's going to be x equals negative two. We'll call these the critical values. Now we need to make a sign chart. Label your sign chart as f of x. We need a row for every factor, so we will have a row for x minus three and x plus two. And we have a little vertical line for each of these critical values. This is a number line, so these need to be in order from least to greatest. So we will put the negative two here and the positive three here. Next, we decide if these factors are positive or negative in each interval. The x minus three gave us the critical value of three. This is the only place where it might change signs. It will be negative to the left and positive to the right. If you need to mentally double check that, just plug in a, a number to the left of three and to the right of three. Uh, to the left of three would be uh, two or even zero. I like to use zero. If you plug in zero, you see that you get a negative number. If you plug in a number to the right of three, like four, four minus three is positive one. So if you need to uh, double check it, that's how you do it. So x plus two will equal zero at negative two. It will be negative to the left and positive to the right. The overall sign of f of x will be positive in this first interval because of the even number of negatives. It will be negative in the next interval because of the odd number of negatives, and of course, positive in this last interval. Because we want the values of x that will cause f of x to be less than or equal to zero, we are interested in the intervals where f of x is negative. So the solutions will be in here. In addition to where f of x is less than zero, we want to know which values of x will cause it to equal zero, less than or equal to. Uh, well, those are, well, I started to start I started to say the critical values, but only three is a value that causes f of x to equal zero, all right, not undefined. So we need to include three in the solution, uh, and we will show that with a bracket when we do the answer down here. Undefined values will never be included, so we will show that in a moment using parentheses. So, I'm basically going to bring this down here. In interval notation, we say negative two to three. All right, again, the bracket shows that we are including the value of x equals three, which is where f of x is equal to zero, but we are never going to include a value that causes f of x to be undefined. So such a value will al always get a parenthesis. So this is the answer to number 32. Number 33, let's again begin by listing the zeros of f of x. So f of x will equal zero, where the numerator is equal to zero, so that's at x equals one, and x equals negative two. We also need to know where f of x is undefined. That will be wherever the denominator is equal to zero, which is at x equals negative one. So these are the critical values. 
Set up your sign chart like this with a row for every factor. For the x minus 1 squared, be sure to include that exponent. So the critical values go across the top. Again, this is a number line. Make sure you put these values in order from least to greatest. So put the negative 2 first, and then the negative 1, and then the positive 1. Time to decide whether these factors are positive or negative in each interval. X minus 1 squared will be positive in every interval because when you square even a negative number, it becomes positive. X plus 2 equals 0 at negative 2. It will be negative to the left and positive to the right. X plus 1 equals 0 at negative 1. It will be negative to the left and positive to the right. The overall sign of f of x will be positive in the first interval because of the even number of negatives. It will be negative in the next interval, odd number of negatives, and it will be positive in the last two intervals. We are looking for the values of x that will cause f of x to be greater than zero. So the solutions will be in the intervals where f of x is positive. Sometimes when we have back-to-back -back intervals like this, we can make one big interval when we write our solution. This is not one of those times. We are going to have to write two separate intervals here. That's because the critical value of 1 is not to be included. Uh, 1 is one of the values that cause f of x to equal 0. But this time, we don't want that. We only want values that cause f of x to be greater than 0, not greater than or equal to. So we have to leave out the 1, uh, which means we need separate intervals. We need to skip over the 1. So in terms of parentheses uh, versus brackets, when you have a greater than, not or equal to, all of the endpoints will get parentheses. So uh, for this first interval, this is going to get parentheses. Uh, the negative one and the positive one will both get parentheses. Okay, and of course the infinities will get parentheses. So the answer is going to be like this. Negative infinity to negative 2 union negative 1 to positive 1. union, positive 1 to infinity. So that's the answer to number 33. To be clear, if this had been greater than or equal to, then we would have included the 1, and these two intervals would be combined into a single interval, negative 1 to infinity. Number 34 needs to be factored first. So x times x makes x squared. Looking at that 12, you know 12 is going to factor as 3 times 4, or 2 times 6, or 1 times 12. But inner plus outer must equal middle. In order to get a middle of negative 1x, we will use the 3 and the 4. To make a negative 1, we need a positive 3x and a negative 4x. Now we continue as usual with the zeros of f of x, where the numerator equals 0, which will be x equals negative 3 and x equals positive 4. And we also need where f of x is undefined. That's where the denominator equals 0, which is at x equals 0. Set up your sign chart like this. x plus 3 is equal to 0 at negative 3. It will be negative to the left and positive to the right. x minus 4 equals 0 at x equals 4 it will be negative to the left and positive to the right. x squared will be positive in every interval 
because when you square even a negative number, it becomes positive. f of x itself will be positive in the first interval because of the even number of negatives, and it will be negative in the next interval, negative in the next interval, and positive in the last interval. We are looking for the values of x that will cause f of x to be greater than or equal to zero. So the solutions will be in the intervals where f of x is positive. Because we want the values that will cause f of x to be greater than or equal to zero, we must include the endpoints where f of x is equal to zero. We need to include the negative three and the four. So we will show that in our solution with brackets on the negative three and the four. So the solution will go like this, negative infinity to two negative three with a bracket, union bracket four to infinity. Let's do one more. I encourage you to pause the video and try this one by yourself. But we need to find the zeros of f of x. That will be where the numerator is equal to zero. So that's going to be at x equals zero because of the little x there. And at x is equal to positive three. We also need where f of x is undefined that's where the denominator is equal to zero. So that's going to be at x equals negative two and x equals positive four. Set up your sign chart like this. I would give the negative two its very own row. Negative two is a constant, so that will simply be negative in every interval. x equals zero at zero, it will be negative to the left and positive to the right. X minus three squared will be positive in every interval because it's being squared. So squaring even a negative number turns it to a positive. X plus two is equal to zero at X equals negative two. It will be negative to the left and positive to the right. And again, x minus four squared will be positive in every interval because it is being squared. The overall sign of f of x will be negative in the first interval because of the odd number of negatives, even in the next interval, even number of negatives, and negative, negative, negative. We are looking for the values of x that will cause f of x to be less than zero. So the solutions will be in the intervals where f of x is negative. We notice the back-to-back -back intervals that are negative. However, we will not be able to make one big interval out of this. The four will not be included in the solution because uh, f of x is undefined there. The three won't be included either, so we can't make one interval out of this because we are looking for the values that will cause f of x to be less than zero, not equal to zero, which is what's happening at three. So we need to make four separate intervals. So the first interval goes from negative infinity to negative two, and then zero to three, three to four, and finally, from four to infinity. All with parentheses to show that none of those endpoints are included. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.